Welcome to the fastest stop in town. Today on the stop is Bad Daf Yudal, and we're going to begin on Yudal Daf Al by the mission at the top. Beishami Omrim. Beishami says that when it comes to tavlin, when it comes to various spices, the din is that nidaychin the madoch shall eat. When you grind it up, you should use a pestle which is made out of wood. The hamelach, however, when it comes to salt. As we're going to see, the din is different, and why? Bepach uveetz haporu. You use a jug and a wooden mixing spoon. Says Rashi, madoch, which again is who buchna, uh, which is a like a pestle, has to do with grinding it. Says Rashi, in sarach shinoi, you don't need. A shinoi, a, a large shinoi, or it says over here, uh, shinoi zuta, ella shinoi zuta, only a small shinoi. Abu b'melach, b'makom sheish melach gasa, b'pach shel cheres, yedachen below dem doicha. You're not allowed to use a pestle, but rather you have to use um, this pach, this pach, which again is more of a shinoi. The question is, why does Beishama require a larger shinoi when it comes to salt than other spices? Beis Hill Omrim, Tavlin, when it comes to spices, Nidaychin Kedarkin. He says you don't need even a shinoi zuta. You can do it without a shinoi and just grind it up in the normal way. Bamadoch shall Evan. You can use a stone pestle. You don't have to use a madoch shall eitz. Or Bamelech Bamadoch shall eitz. Beis Hill says that there has to at least be some type of uh, shinoi when it comes to salt. So either uh, there's a slight a shinoi when it comes to the tavlin and a larger shinoi when it comes to salt, according to Beishamai, or according to Beis Hillel, when it comes to spices, tavlin don't require any shinoi. However, when it comes to salt, at least some shinoi um, or a shinoi zuta. The question is, the kol yalmami is melech boy shinoi. Both Beis Shammai and even Beis Hill require that some type of difference must be done. You cannot use a madok shal evan. A mortal of stone has to be of eight. The question is my time. Why do we require salt to have a shinoi, but not necessarily when it comes to tabla? Timur gives two answers. Rav Huna Rav Chista. Chad Oimer, Kol Kaderes Kulon, Srichos Melech. All dishes require salt. However, the in Kol Hakaderes Srichos Tabla. Not all foods require spices. So what? So Rashi says as follows. Kol mini tablin tavshil srichos melech. Every type of dish needs food, needs to have salt in it. Hilchach me'esmol havi yada di'iboy li'laducha. You should have already known from yesterday that you needed to have the salt prepared. And therefore since, and there's no reason why you couldn't have done it. So since you didn't prepare it, you have to do some type of a shinoi. However, when it comes to um, spices, not necessarily does a person know that they're going to need them from Erev Yomtiv. And therefore, according to Beis Hillel, not even any form of Shino, or according to Beis Shammai, all you need is a Shino Zuta. Chad Oimer Kola Tavlin Mephigan Tamun. Melch Eino Mephigan Tamun. The issue of grinding it before Yomtiv, when it comes to Tavlin, is that the potency and the taste will dissipate, it will go away. And therefore, because of that, it's better to do it on the spot, on Yom Tiv. However, when it comes to salt, if you grind up salt the day before, it's not going to make any difference in its taste or its potency. And therefore, because of that, it should have been done before. And therefore, again, that's why some type of shinoi must be made. So my binayu, what's the difference? These are both true. So what is the halachic difference between these two answers? The binayu one difference is the yada my kader my kadera Let's say you knew 100% what you were planning on cooking. So according to the first lashon, you would require shinoi because you knew that you needed these tavlin from Arab Yomto, so you should have prepared it. But according to the second lashon, it doesn't need a shinoi because it would have lost its taste. Inami, another difference would be the marika. Says Rashi, it's a tavlin shell marika. It's some type of spice. That difference uh, is as follows: Sheish kadera she me tavlin oisa bikarkum ve'enu mafik taimo. That its freshness does not go away, 
even if you would have uh, ground it up before. And therefore, because of this particular type of spice, according to the second Lashon, boy shinoi. It would need a shinoi because, in this case, it would not be mafik taimo. First Lashon, because you may not have realized that's what you wanted to make, so therefore, it would uh, not require shinoi. Amr Rabbi Yehud, Amr Shmuel. Kol hanidaychin, when it comes to all forms of crushing things, nidaychin could darken. You can always crush them in the normal fashion. You feel melach, even when it comes to salt. Apparently, according to the shita, not even salt requires any form of a shinoi. Uh, what are you talking about? Bahamar's melach with shinoi, we said that it does. Now, who do you haitan? The san yo omer remeir monechel beish amer beis hillel al hanidaychin, when it comes to grinding it up, shinidaychin kedarkin, that you can grind it in the normal fashion, umelchimahen, including salt. Obviously, this is not what our Mishnah says, but this is this opinion that Beis Shammai's Hill don't argue when it comes to this. So where do they argue? When it comes to crushing salt by itself, when it comes to grinding up salt, crushing salt by itself, it has to be, as we said, in a pach with eight haporer, has to be in like a jug or in a wooden mixing spoon. With sli, when it comes to for roasting the the food, of a lolik deira, not when it comes to a uh, a dish. They still omer bechol daver in any matter. So where it says when bechol daver salgadaitoch says Rashi, and when we say roasting, Rashi says with sli means hainu daver muot for a small amount. Kadeira is a larger dish. So Rashi says mefil b'daver she'ain nithel b'shabes. It sounds like even for a muksa item. So on this, the Gemara says, obviously that's not what it refers to. El ema lichol daber, for any purpose. As Rashi, v'yafil l'kadeira, even if it's for a larger dish, v'yal karchach k'dark amri, k'chol derech shita sashas, yama nech l'dumidu l'nech l'kukaymer, nech l'al hatav l'numelech. So they don't argue when it comes to, again, this opinion, salt even, does not require uh, a shinoi. When it is umelch imahen, when the salt is with it, in other words, you're grinding it together. However, if it's completely by itself, is where they argue. Omel Rav Acha Bardola Labre. So he said to his son the following: Kidachis, that when you are engaged in grinding and chopping up, Rashi says salt. That's, so the question is, does it need a shinoi? So atzle you should tilt the mortar when you crush it. You should con- tip the container a bit, uh, and then you should grind it up. And Rashi says, um, And this is even referring to a grinder of stone. If you do some type of difference, that's why he asks you to at least tilt, uh, tip the container. Rav Shama Kol Buchna, he heard the sound of a salt chopper taking place. Omer, I love Migavoy the Beisoyhu. This clearly is not coming from my house, says Rashi. Yodiani, she ain't Zebatach Beisi. I know this can't be from my house. She asarti alehem, Lodoich to chop up, and Madach Shal Evan, Bloshinoi. There's no way it's possible this couldn't be. And where's what I mean? The Dilma Suliathli, maybe they did a Shinoi, even though it's clearly from the sounds, it's a regular chopper. But maybe they tilted it like was advised by Rav Achabardala. So he says the Shami Dahavitsolikala. He heard a very clear sound. And if it's a very clear sound, it was clearly not tilted on an angle. The Dilma Tavlan Havi, how do you know it was salt? Maybe he's talking about Tavlan, which does not require a shinui or as much of a shinui. So Tavlin Navuchi Manavuch Kolaihu. So when it comes to um, tavlin, it like has a barking or different type of, of sound, and apparently they were able to know the difference between the sounds of tavlin and salt. Tanurbama, ein oisin tisni, a person is not allowed to make tisni. Rashi says on yomtiv, which is a great level of tircha, which is Rashi says shikotesh hachitin, you chop up the kernels at shnechlokim alf arba until it's chopped up into four different parts. So it's something which is a very tedious 
uh, process, and therefore one is not allowed to do what's called tisti. And then apparently a second statement, the in koichin b'makteshes. One is not allowed to crush apparently anything in a makteshes in a grinder. So tarti. The Gemara wonders, um, is this two separate statements that are being said? They seem to be really unrelated. What exactly is being said over here? So how can cover? Matam in oisin tisni. It's basically explaining why can you not use uh, tisni? in kaitchin b'makteshes because you're not allowed to use a makteshes, a grinder. Basically, what this is saying is that the process of tisni would require a makteshes, and since um, you're not allowed to use a grinder, so therefore you cannot make tisni. Vilema in kaitchin b'makteshes. Why don't you just say, don't use a grinder, then obviously that'll mean that you won't be able to do this process of tisni, which requires it. So, itani in kaitchin b'makteshes ha'bamina ha'namila b'makteshes g'dayla. You would think maybe only a makteshes g'dola is not allowed to be used. Of a makteshes katana, one which is smaller, which obviously is for less use. A mashapra dami kamashmon. You would think you, to make a distinction, a distinction between the type of chopper. Maybe only a large one is not allowed to be used, but a small one is allowed to be used. Kamash Mulan, that's why it says, in oisin tisni klau. You can never make it, and because you cannot chop it up with any form of a makteshes. So that's what it's come to tell you, and that, therefore one will not make a distinction between a gedola or katana, or a large or small chopper. Vasanya, what do you mean? We learn in kaitchim a makteshes gedola. You're telling me that you're not allowed to use a makteshes, but it's not true. It depends on the type. <coughs> you could use a, a small one. So I'm Rabbi, so we have two answers. Says Rashi. Above is talking about a large makteshes. It's two different things. Says Rashi. You're never allowed to make this tisni. It's a great tircha, even if you use a small chopper. But you cannot chop other things. You're not allowed to use a large one for these other things. However, when it comes to the daisa and the like, you are allowed to use a small chopper. So again, when it comes to tisni, you can't use any chopper whatsoever. However, when it comes to other items, you can at least use a katana. Yudalad Amad Beis. Rabba Oimer, Rabba gives a second answer. Lukasha halon v'halohu. It's the answer we always hear. One is, if you're in Babel, one is in your Eretz Yisrael. So what's the difference between living in Babel and Eretz Yisrael? The mitzvahs are the mitzvahs. It's not tuli b'aretz. So Rashi says, when in Babel, Dulaislan Abdi, there's no servants. And if there's a servant, the Mazalzle, they could cause problems, as we'll see in the next Rashi. So if you're in Bavel, so you yourself are doing it, so therefore not we're not concerned. We're allowing you to use a Maktashes katana. We'll say you can use a small one and we know that's what you're gonna be honest about it. However, if you're an heir to Israel, Holohu, the East Wuhu Abdi, they have slaves or servants. The Mazalzli, they're going to disgrace the whole thing and make a mockery of it. But Oysin, no, but Gedoyla, they'll use the big one. However, Oymin, no, but Gatania Sinu, no, I use the small one. I use the small one. Of course, it's not the case. They use the big one because it's much more convenient. It chops up a lot more stuff. So, therefore, that's what we said. In Eretz Israel, no, you cannot use it at all because we're concerned that the Vadim will end up using the large one. However, in Babel, where there's not a Vadim, so we certainly know that you're not going to do things wrong, and therefore you can use the small one. Rav Papi, let's, let's look at TB2021. TB21 asks the question, Mahu lichta ishchitin v'tisni o v'daisa b'makteshes g'do katana. So according to Abayim, so this is question 21, Abayim says tisni is not allowed, you can't even use a small chopper. Other katishos, you can't use a large one, but a small one's allowed. Rava says, in Eretz Yisrael, uh, he answers all grinders, a field of the katana, even the small one. In Bavel, the gedol also the katana mutter. Okay. Vaita. Let's see now the next Mishnah. Haboyer Kitnios. 
So the din of separation of boirer with regard to legumes, what is the din as far as separating them be yomtiv? So again, machlok, beshami armim boirer oichel oichel. What you have to do, just like we normally know, the three rules of boirer has to be oichel mitach psalis, you take the good from the bad. Also, miad for immediate consumption and biad with your hands. So Be Shammai says that this is what's supposed to be done here as well. You could separate it in your normal fashion, which apparently means you could even maybe take sauce from Oichel to understand that a little bit more when we get to the Gemara. And what is that Kedarko? The Cheiko, you can put in the cloth, a cloth, let's say, is in your lap. You can use a funnel or a tamkho, it's like a plate. As we said before, uh, these are things which are not really miyuchad uh, in any way for separating. Of a little bit of a little bit enough of a little bit cover. You can't use sifters and sieves and the like because those things are specifically designated for boyer. So it has to be biyad. It cannot be with a kli, which is miyuchad lekach. Rabbi Gamliel Omer af mediach v'shoyla. He says what a person could do is you could wash the kitneos in water. The shola. And it'll the psoilus will end up floating up uh, to the top. That is uh, what is acceptable according to him. Let's see the Gemara. Tanya, Amar Rabbi Gamliel. So Rabbi Gamliel says as follows: Med When did Beis Hillel allow you to take even psoilus from the uh, the bad from the good? Kisha Oichel Maruba al psoilus. Only in a circumstance when there is so much Oichel. And there's just a tiny amount of psoilus. So by you taking the oichel, it's a lot more tircha. If let's say there's a thousand things, and 998 of them is oichel, it's much easier just to remove the psoilus. So therefore, that's what what base hill means. Of a psoilus maruba, if let's there's a lot of psoilus al oichel, dibri hakol noitel es oichel umaniachas psoilus. Then certainly you should first take the oichel and leave the psoilus. So Mar says one second. Psoilus maruba al oichel. It says there's more psoilus than oichel. Miika man shari. How? Who would possibly say if there's more psoilus than oichel that um, that there's uh, uh, any possible uh, 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 possible heter to move it? Says Rashi. I feel it's haltalo, but betili le miyuta le gabiruba. This oichel is so minute compared to the majority. Probably kukule psoyos vulichazi. It's like it's nothing. Again, if it's 999 psoyos, there's one oichel there. So what gives you the right? It's like it's bottle. Lotzricha de nafesh betircha vezuter b'shiira. It's referring to where there is the psoyos is more troubling to have removed, but it is smaller in in measure. And let's look at Rashi. This is also. Um, Question two. First, we did. We had, let's do question one also. They will find him nechku begemara al tavlim in sarchinoi ladichasai. So, if you one was that you knew when it came to the salt or the dish, uh, the, the tavlin, what you were going to make the day before, or the difference between if it's mafikoychai, uh, if it's going to lose its potency. Question two says the asa taruvos. What mixtures does Beis Hill allow you to separate the kidneys So, and well, then we'll, we'll see how he answers this and we'll look at this Rashi. He says, Kisha Oichel Maruba, when there's more Oichel, Mikamos, um, then, uh, then that's one time when Beis Hill allows you to separate the Psoas from the Oichel. However, of a Tircheses Buraso Maruba, it's more difficult, even though it's more Oichel, it's more Tircha. To separate it this way, matirchas briras apsoilos. So if it's harder for you to separate the oichel, so therefore um, at that time you're allowed to separate the psoilos. Let's look at this Rashi. The nafesh betircha sheishnu dak. Very, let's say it's very small. The pieces are very, very fine. They're very, very small. So because of that, um, the psoilos. Are very very hard to let's say remove. Vahachi kaimer the medbar morim bezman shetarich ha'oichel maruba dal shel psoilus. 
who the army base hill knights of Silas Dimute Betircha Adif. He's more concerned of the Tircha, not about how much there is. So if it's true that the Oichel, that there again, there there's a Tircha of the Oichel is greater. It's more difficult to let's say pick up these small little pieces than the Psoilus, <coughs> then Basil says, you know what, then take out the Psoilus. Even though it may be that there's more Oichel or less Oichel, it's all totally on Tircha. So the Im Tircha Psoilus move, but let's say it's harder to remove the Psoilus. Al shel ha'oichel diri ha'kol, etc. So again, according to the sheet of Beis Hillel, the way I read this, it's not totally on the measurements necessarily. It's totally on the um, the difficulty. So if it's a greater tircha to remove the small pieces of ochel, even if it may be um, that there may be more or less of them, it's all totally on the tircha, and therefore uh, a person is able to remove the psoilus in that situation where the oichel is very small and difficult to remove. Again, I uh, the different before should exactly how to understand this, what this means. If it's also totally on the measurement as well, under certain circumstances, fine. So all you can do is you fill, fill it up with water and the soil is filled up. This is what Rabbi Gamil's custom was. He would take a bucket filled with uh, lentils, who metzifin olamayim, and he would have them soak with water, and then all of a sudden, all the psalos would float up. I thought it was the other way around that the oichel was on the top of the psalos on the bottom. Lukasha habafra habgili. One's referring to the like dirt or ashes, the dirt, so that fell on the bottom. However, the gili, the straw, that was something that floated to the top. Person is only allowed to send manos on yomtiv. What are manos? Which will give us an insight of what mishalach manos are, as we're all familiar with the din. You're not allowed to give except for a dumber hamuchan rash, he says. Something which is prepared and ready to be given, uh, to be consumed. In asli you can't give them something which is going to be for tomorrow. You can go in chatichos basar, uh, let's say pieces of meat, let's say they're frozen, etc., or fish, things that need to be prepared. So that's the same din when it comes to mishloch manos, very interesting language. That when it comes to giving, as we know on Purim, is a chiyav of giving gifts to your friend. However, it has to be something which can be consumed right away. That's why it's called manot. Shloch manos are specifically gifts, but they're gifts in which are a davar hamuchan. So Meish says that's what's required. Beis Hillel Amri no. Meishalchin behemachayim beof. You can give to your friend animals ben chayim ben shchutin, whether they're alive or shechted, because you're allowed to shecht on yomtiv. So technically, he could do the shechita and he can have it prepared on yomtiv if he really wanted to. Furthermore, Meishalchin yenos shmona maslasa is to kitneis. You can give wine, oil, flowers, and legumes of a low tevua. He doesn't want you to bring uh, to your friend grain, as Rashi says, She'en ruya hayom. That for sure is not fit for today. She'en toichnin b'yomtu. You can't grind it up now. Shehoyu lo litchen esmol, because it could have been done yesterday. Why? Vlo tafik taima. As we said, if it's not tafik taima, if it's, the taste is not going to change, so then we do not allow you to do it on yomtu. It should have done before. And therefore you cannot bring tvua. Rav Shimon Mater B'tvua. Interesting enough, Rav Shimon says it's allowed. Why would you be allowed to bring it? After all, you can't grind it up anyway. So Rashi says, Shema Yivashlim B'Kadera. Maybe you'll cook it up. V'yich Deshem B'Maktashas Katana. As we said before, you could use um, a small chopper. Tani Rav Yechiel U'vavashol Yasenu B'Shura. He says, provided... Um, that it should not be done in a row, says Rashi. Don't uh, send it to like many people. Because it causes a lot of a tumult, much fanfare. Uh, it almost looks like you're selling things in the marketplace because there's uh, a whole bunch of people around. A row is no less than three people. Boy Ravashi, Tlasa Gabi with Tlasa Mini, my take. What if three people with three things? Is that really considered to be like one? Or is that 
consent to be like three and is a problem. So that the Gemara doesn't have an answer. Okay. As Rashi says, Mias lean on Buster Kol Minba Min, the Shari. And we go after each Min and therefore it's allowed. Odilma Hashtumia Avshemilsa, because there's three people and it causes um, too much commotion. Rav Shimon Mata Betfua. Tanya Rav Shimon Mata Betfua can go in Chitin wheat, Lassus Mehen Lud Yois. Rashi says it's a Michael Chitin, some type of a dish out of wheat. Sha'irin, <coughs> you can give barley. Wheat and lefne behemto, because it can, it's fit for animal consumption. On yomtiv, a dish and give lentils lost mehen rishisin, which again is a dish made out of lentils. Let's see the next mishnah. Mishalchin kalim, a person can send clothing. Bein tfurin, bein shein tfurin, whether they're sewn already and prepared, or even if they're not sewn and prepared. Bein shein on tfurin, ve'alpal pi sheish mehen kilayim, which is an interesting finish. What exactly are you going to use this clothing for? You're not to wear kilayim, but you can give this to a person. The Hamel Sarachamoyed, and it says that Sarachamoyed, which Gomorrah is going to say, how is kilayim fit for for uh, for the moyed? Avulu Sandal Hamasumer, you're not allowed to give this type of shoe which has nails on the bottom, in which the Gemara in the Sefer Shabbos discusses. In three different cases, there were people were Kleisner were hiding, and they were wearing these things. They were scared, and all of a sudden they heard noise, and they ran out, and they were trampling on people. And they said there was more damage that caught, was caused internally by us being trampled on by our own shoes. So therefore, we said anytime there's large gatherings, you're not allowed to wear them, which includes on on Shabbos or Yom Tov. And therefore, <clears throat> there's no purpose of giving him these shoes because they're not to be worn. Woman now she ain't no or for that matter. Uh, shoes that are not sewn because they're not fit, you can't wear them. Also, not if it is uh, white. Because it needs uh, a craftsman to make it black. They wouldn't uh, wear them in that fashion. Anything in which a person, Rashi says, misconscious that you can adorn yourself, you can wear it on Yom Tov, so then you can send it to someone. Obviously, if it's a sewn garment, it's where it's ready to be worn. Now, even when it comes to something which is not sewn up, you still have some utility, it could be used for covering things. What's the whole idea? Why would you be allowed to give uh, Kilayim? How could the Mishnah say, that the hain looks like hamoy. The bechite mechazu lememech tutei. Maybe it's fit that you can put it underneath you, right? You're not wearing it then. But asan yu yawa olecha. It says you're not allowed to put it on you. Kabalata yochel latzia itachtecha. But you are allowed to actually like put it underneath you. So it's okay. It's not so fast. Kabal amich chacham him asalasas kein. You're not allowed to shema tichrach lo nima al besaro. Maybe a thread will wrap around you, and therefore it's like you're going to be wearing it. Even though technically, if it's underneath you, you're not wearing it, but maybe it'll kind of flip over you, and it's kind of like you're wearing it, and therefore we don't allow it. So it doesn't matter, even if it's mutter, maybe midaraisa, but the rabbanan are geysers, therefore that's a problem. You shouldn't be able to give it to your friend on Yom Tov. So again, what's its purpose? V'chitema demasik midi beni veni. Maybe you'll separate it between yourself. So you have another garment between you, so it's not going to end up happening. There will be no threads going to wrap around you. We basically make a low plug. Even if it's not something which is likely, it doesn't matter. Even if you have a huge separation, numerous separations between you and the Kalayim, you're still not to put it underneath you. Then you have the the parentheses Mishim Shnei Lecha, which again it's not really because of of a Din Deraisa, but it's because of a Gezer. That's why perhaps it was removed. El Gaviloin, maybe it's talking about a uh, a Vilon, which is like a uh, a curtain. It says Rashi Shroi Lefarso Kenegat Pesach. You can spread this um, by your door. So, okay, fine. You're not going to wear it, but it still had you can have Kilaim hanging up um, on your house. It's just as close. <laughs> what is the reason why a vilon, this 
um, a curtain uh, is Tame. And why is it Makabal Toma? <coughs> because a servant will warm himself, will wrap himself around these um, like window shades uh, to keep himself warm. So the problem is, if that's the case, then you can't even have that um, in your house because of the chashash that this person who is also mechuyev in mitzvos, then he's not allowed to wear kilaim either. So even though it's not really designated and specified for clothing, but if you do it ali de vilon, it's still makabotoma because uh, this person is going to end up wrapping himself in it. Not only will it become tame because of him, but also he's going to be chayv kilaim. So you can't hang it up in a vilon. Ella. The Gemara says, as we continue the test of Abba Aleph, Bikashin. We're talking about hard fabric, says Rashi. Begadim kashim she'en mechanamim mutleishim lehem. The only time you're not allowed to sit on kelayim is if it's a nice soft fabric. However, if it's something which will give you no comfort, no warmth, because it's a very thick, hard, uncomfortable, rough fabric, that is allowed. The Chihad Yom Aram Chudim of Yeshua, Hai. Namta Gamda, when it came to this hard felt, the Narash of this place, Sharia, <coughs> he allowed this. He allowed, as Rashi says, the Yeshiva Shenu Mechan. The person was allowed to sit on this very thick material because it does not warm you up. Umra Papa, Ardalin Ein Behem Mishum Kelayim. He says, uh, this type of Ardalin, Rashi says, Levashan Tachas Minalehen. There's some type of Garment underneath uh, your your shoes apparently that's what it means. The toilet only had or it, it helps uh, hold up the the leather. Um, it's again it's it's put by by the foot as Rashi explains. So that's also in the Hemisham Kilayim. That's not an issue of Kilayim. Again Rashi says because the Kashatain this material is very thick and heavy and you're not getting any hana from it. Omarava Hani Sarari Depshiti when it comes to these. Um, purses um, which are made out of kilayim in behemishim kilayim. It's not a problem, um, says Rashi. Beged kilayim shisroyin bomos. You wrap money with it. Mutlasit in mechiko. You can put this in your um, lap. Shamos makshin oiso because the money makes it harder. The ena mechalman doesn't heat anything up. However, the bizarni Rashi says. Should sar behem zroyim. If let's say it's a purse, uh, not for money, but rather for seeds, niyesh behem mishum kilaim because the seeds are not going to uh, soften it or cool it off, but rather it will uh, remain hard, it will remain warm, and therefore you cannot put it on your on your chiko. Uh, you cannot put it on your body. Ravashi oimer echad zev echad zev ein behem mishum kilaim. No, it's not a problem. If you shein der chima bekach. This is not the normal way of uh, warming your body up, and therefore, even though it's true that it's for seeds, that he matters. Okay, we're going to stop there. Let's see, um, maybe a couple more uh, questions. Okay. T A twenty. Begit shel kilayim shisarim boimos and zeroyim. There you go. This is test above and out. Hard question because this is like a sidebar question point. That if you have this, uh, you wrap up money or seeds. So if it's of money, it's definitely mutter because it's it's hard. However, zeroyim it's a machlokus, either because it's not hard, and therefore it's also, or the one who's mutter says ein derch chimum bekach. So was so says T A twenty. So let me write this down T A twenty. Hani Sarari Dipshiti. So a purse for coins or for money definitely is not an issue of Kilayim. The Zarni of seeds is a machlokis, um, whether or not it is allowed or not, because perhaps Ein Derech Chimum Bekach. Again, that was TA20. We'll see a couple of Rabbi Gibber's questions and we'll stop. Lomas Verily Beis Hillel, Betavlin Nidoichin Kedarkin. How come when it comes to spices, it can be done in any way without a shinu, but salt reads, needs a shinu, a So he says, all the dishes need salt, but not all dishes 
<coughs> need Tavlin. So you should have done it on Erev Yom Tov. Or Tavlin would lose its freshness. The salt grinded yesterday wouldn't lose any freshness. So you should have done it yesterday. Manafgamina. A type of Tavlin which doesn't lose any of its freshness. Or you knew what foods you would be eating uh, on the holiday. Question 1450. Tisni ve'en koichid b'machtashes. So do these not? Maybe they, they seem to contradict each other. I said tarti. So you can't use a good machteshes kedoyla, but you may use a machteshes katana. But by tisni, not even a machteshes katana. Beautiful. Or really, it's a matam. One is in Eretz Israel. Not sure it's a mat. That's okay. One is in Eretz Israel where a vadim who will do wrong. We even answer Maktesh's katana. Bubble, there's no servants, we permit Maktesh's katana. But is oifin moidim beis hillel beis shami de ain levar psos matarcha oichel beyomtiv? When did he say you're not allowed to separate bad from good? She says, if there are more psoilas than oichel, but really this means the psoilas is harder tircha to get to. But if it's a smaller require, but it's a smaller measurement than the psoilas I wrote. Matai Asr Beis Hill was Shleich Doiron Shel Behem Achayim Shel Doif Biyamtiv. When are you not allowed to give these animals if it's done in a shura in a row because it looks like it's been going to the marketplace for business transactions. Otherwise, you can give an animal, just not three. Lama Mutul Shleich Daver Shel Kilaim Biyamtiv Olei Ein Roy LeKilaim Lefiyam Maskana. So a hard begged which won't warm you up. And you may sit on it. Ha'im sandal hamasumer, these shoes with nails, are the muksa matalta biyamta. Ha'im sandal hamasumer, muksa matalta biyamta. And I wrote, I wrote no. Let's let's see this. So a person's not allowed to to wear them. Let's see what Rashi says over here. Rashi says regarding. Uh, these shoes of a low sandal shall eat, uh, which is masupa or masamiris kavuoloi, and there's these nails. She goes with chamim malav shalul and now with shabbos miyamtiv. You're not allowed to wear them on shabbos miyamtiv. Mishum masa shahaya shnahargu harugu mishabbos al yadav. I think the answer is the answer should be yes. It is moksa. Okay. For some reason, I didn't get that wrong. Matayim in the afil, but made it tefillin b'shavus yamdiv. Okay, we'll see that tomorrow. Da'afad kam.